Anarchism arrived in Australia within a few years of anarchism developing as a distinct tendency in the wake of the 1871 Paris Commune. Although a minor school of thought and politics, composed primarily of campaigners and intellectuals, Australian anarchism has formed a significant current throughout the history and literature of the colonies and nation. Anarchism's influence has been industrial and cultural, though its influence has waned from its high point in the early 20th century where anarchist techniques and ideas deeply influenced the official Australian Union movement. In the mid-20th century anarchism's influence was primarily restricted to urban bohemian cultural movements. In the late 20th century and early 21st century Australian anarchism has been an element in Australia's social justice and protest movements. History Anarchism has found both proponents and critics during the short history of Australia. International movements, émigrés or home-grown anarchists have all contributed to radical politics during the nation's formation. Beginnings The Melbourne Anarchist Club was officially founded on 1 May 1886 by David Andrade and others breaking away from the Australasian Secular Association of Joseph Symes, the journal Honesty being the Anarchist Club's official organ, and anarchism became a significant minor current on the Australian left. The current included a diversity of views on economics, ranging from an individualism influenced by Benjamin Tucker to the anarchist communism of Yaw Andrews. All regarded themselves as broadly socialist. However, the anarchists mixed with the seminal literary figures Henry Lawson and Mary Gilmore and the labor journalist and utopian socialist William Lane. The most dramatic event associated with this early Australian anarchism was perhaps the bombing of the non-union ship SS Aramac on 27 July 1893 by Australian anarchist and union organiser Larry Petrie. This incident occurred in the highly charged atmosphere following the defeat of the 1890 Australian Maritime Dispute and the 1891 Australian Shearers Strike, an atmosphere which also produced the Sydney-based direct action group the Active Service Brigade. Petrie was arrested for attempted murder but charges were dropped after a few months. He later joined Lane's New Australia Utopian Experiment in Paraguay. A major challenge to the principles of these early Australian anarchists was the virulent anti-Chinese racism of the time, of which racism William Lane himself was a leading exponent. On a political level the anarchists opposed the anti-Chinese agitation. The Chinese, like ourselves, are the victims of monopoly and exploitation. Editorialised honesty. We had far better set to and make our own position better instead of, like a parcel of blind babies, trying to make theirs worse. The anarchists were sometimes more ambivalent on the subject than this statement of principle might suggest. Anti Chinese racism was entrenched in the labor movement of which they were a part, and challenged by few others. <laughs> <laughs> World War Monty Miller, a veteran of the Eureka Uprising, belonged to the Melbourne Anarchist Club. He would later become a well-known militant of the Australian branch of the Industrial Workers of the World IWW and was arrested and imprisoned in 1916. His friend the social activist and literary figure Willem Siebenhar was among those who campaigned for his release, after the First World War Australian anarchism fell into decline. The tradition was kept alive by, among others, the prominent agitator and street speaker Chummy Fleming who died in Melbourne in 1950 and by Italian anarchists active in Melbourne's Matteo T. Club and the North Queensland Canefields. William Andrade, 1863-1939, David Andrade's brother and fellow anarchist, became a successful bookseller in Sydney and Melbourne and while he retired from active politics in about 1920 he continued to influence events by allowing various radical groups to use his premises throughout the 1920s and 1930s. <laughs> Post-World War II After World War II the Sydney Libertarians developed a distinct brand of «pessimistic» or «permanent protest» anarchism, deeply skeptical of revolution and of any grand scheme of human betterment, yet friendly to the revolutionary unionism of the IWW. Poet Harry Houghton associated with this group, and his friend Germaine Greer belonged to it in her youth. By 1972 she was calling herself an 
anarchist communist, and was still identifying herself as basically an anarchist in 1999. The Sydney Libertarians were the political tendency around which the Sydney Push social milieu developed, a milieu which included many anarchists, the Sydney Libertarians, along with the remnant of the Australian IWW and of Italian and Spanish migrant anarchism fed into the anarchist revival of the 60s and 70s which Australia shared with much of the developed world. Another post-war influence that fed into modern Australian anarchism was the arrival of anarchist refugees from Bulgaria. The last years of Australian involvement in the Vietnam War was an active period for Australian anarchists. The high-profile draft resistor Michael Matson in particular became something of a folk hero. The prolific anarchist poet Pi O began to write. The Brisbane Self-Management Group was formed in 1971, heavily influenced by the Councilist writings of the Socialisme au Barbary group and its offshoots. The Anarchist Bookshop in Adelaide began publishing the monthly Black Growth. Anarchists active in inner city Melbourne played a major part in creating the Fitzroy Legal Service in 1972. In 1974, after successfully campaigning against the 1971 South Africa Rugby Union Tour of Australia, anti apartheid movement activist Peter McGregor was one of several people who involved themselves in resurrecting the Sydney Anarchist Group to organise an Australian Anarchist Conference in Sydney in January 1975. At the time anarchist theory was being intensely debated. A diverse federation of Australian anarchists FAA was formed at a conference in Sydney in 1975. A walkout from the second conference in Melbourne in 1976 led to the founding of the Libertarian Socialist Federation LSF, which in turn led to the founding of Jura Books in 1977. For many years 1982 to 2013, the anarcho-syndicalist paper, Rebel Worker, was published from the Jura Books premises. It is now published elsewhere. The end of the 1970s saw the development of a Christian anarchist-Catholic worker tendency in Brisbane, the most prominent person in the group being Chiron O'Reilly. This tendency exploded into prominence in 1982 because of its part along with other anarchists and assorted radicals in the Brisbane free speech fights during the Queensland premiership of Joe Bielt Peterson. In Melbourne in 1977 the Libertarian Workers for a Self-Managed Society LW were formed on a theoretical platform similar to the Brisbane Self-Management Group. This libertarian workers group engaged very actively in propaganda, which played a major part on making possible the Australian anarchist centenary celebrations of 1986. Apart from generally respectful publicity the lasting consequences of the celebrations were the founding of the Anarchist Media Institute, its most visible member being Joseph Toscano, and the founding of an Australian section of the International Workers Association called the Anarcho-Syndicalist Federation a major part of the activity of the ASF was its agitation among Melbourne's public transport workers culminating in a significant influence on the Melbourne tram dispute of 1990. Topic see also Angry Penguins How to Make Trouble and Influence People Mutiny Collective Topic References Topic External links Bibliography of Anarchism and Syndicalism in Australia and Aotearoa, New Zealand Sydney Libertarians and Anarchism Index Anarcho-Syndicalism in Melbourne and Sydney Anarchist Bulletin Melbourne Anarchist Club Jura Books Rebel Worker Black Rose Anarchist Library and Bookshop Mutiny Zine, A Paper of Anarchistic Ideas and Action Brisbane Solidarity Network Black Swan Adelaide